Hello, my name is Stefan. I'm a PM on the remote desktop services team. Um, one of the features that I own is MSX App Attach, and what I want to show here is how I am going to troubleshoot an issue where I am trying to publish a package, and that package, the path to it, is not being resolvable by my VM, and this will be mainly due to the lack of permissions. So the first thing I'm going to do is obviously go into the portal and show you the issue. So now I am in the Azure portal and what I want to show you here is that if I go to my Windows Virtual Desktop Blade and here I have a few host pools. So we're going to focus on the 1030, the one that has a 1030 in it. We'll open that one. And what we'll see here is the MSX packages. No packages have been added. So let's go ahead and add a package. Now, my packages are in a storage account. I don't remember the access path on uh, the path to that storage account on top of my head. So I'm gonna go into all the storage accounts. Here, this is the one I'm, I wanna use. We're going to go into the file shares. I have, uh, you, as you can see, a file share here. And inside that file share, I have uploaded uh, an MSX image. So I'm going to click on properties. I'll grab this path. I'm going to open a little uh, cheat sheet, like in Notepad, so I'm able to capture those notes. And what I need to add here at the end is obviously the name of the file. Make sure to change this. And since this needs to be an SMB path, I'm going to add the term uh, backwards slashes at the front. So this is the path that I need to use if I would like to add this MSX package to my host pool. So I'm going to click Add. I'm going to provide the path. Now what's going to happen is the portal is going to reach down to uh, the VMs that are in this host pool and will ask those VMs to access the path. As you can see right away, um, both session hosts in this host pool report challenges with uh, accessing the, the path. So I'm going to zoom slightly so you're able to see the error better. You can see here metadata activity. Okay, so this is the, the standard error pretty much saying my machines don't have access to the path. And we're going to go through the steps for troubleshooting that. The very first step is to make sure that my two machines have permissions on the Azure storage account. And since these are computer accounts, they have to be joined in a group. And that group has to be synced in Azure, uh, to, to Azure AD. So I already have the storage account open. We'll go there. We'll grab, um, like I said, the storage account. We're going to go to Access Control, uh, Rows Assignments. And here we'll look for a group that supposedly has our two uh, machines inside. So the group that I'm going to be using is WB Test Users. As you can see, that group right now has Share con Contributor, WB Test Users, and etc. And I also have this one, UPDS FS Logic, which is kind of my backup group for testing. So let's check each one of them. Let's start with this one, UPD and FS Logic. So what I'm trying to see here is who are the members of this group. And you can see my machines, 1030, are members of this group. So I can probably, I'm, I'm going to change my statement, and I'm going to say I'm going to use the UPDFS logic group. Okay, so permissions here, fine. Now the next step will be to make sure that the storage account has been domain joined. And what does that mean is that I have run the PowerShell that our friends in Azure Files have created for the joining storage account to the domain controller. And to do that, um, I'm gonna use my domain controller, but you can use any VM that's on your uh, 
that's already been added to the main controller. Okay, so I'm on the main controller. I had some stuff open in the past. I need PowerShell and I need the Active Directory uh, users and computers. So somewhere here, I should have my storage account and that storage account, the way it shows up here is by running the script. And the way it's uh, set up in my demo environment, uh, right here is the computer account that is represented, uh, it's representing the storage account. And the way this was done, go to PowerShell eyes, I should have my script there. Not really, but um, okay. So the script that I am referencing is available at uh, the documentation. So the documentation is on our doc site. I am referencing uh, this uh, script. Well, I don't know if the script is the right word, but set of commandlets that join the account. If you need to do that, and the instructions were on the screen. I will add the URL into the description. I already know this has been done excellent. One another thing that we can check is making sure that both UPDF is logic. Right members have 1030 and that will be test users, which is the original group has 1030. You can see both groups. So I can use either group. Okay, so we checked the RBAC permissions on the storage account. We checked the group that is properly created. We checked that our storage house, uh, sorry, storage account has been added to the uh, domain controller. So there's a computer object representing the storage account. The next thing we need to make sure that has been done is that we have granted the NTFS permissions on the file share. And the way we're going to do that uh, is by going back to the storage account. Here we're going to go to access keys. And don't worry, those will be long gone by the time uh, this video makes it public. We'll grab our storage key. And we're going to put it in our cheat sheet because we're going to need it for something much more important. And that's something much more important is to generate the net use command, which we have to do the first time in order to be able to assign the NTFS permissions. The syntax of the net use command is obviously net use. We're going to specify um, uh, a driver letter. It doesn't really matter, just make sure that whatever driver letter you're specifying is not already used on your machine. Then we're going to say, what is the path to our storage account? Right, so to our file share. So we need to do the file share. Here it is, or it is. And then we need to do the following users, oh, sorry, user, Azure, and Backward slash, then it's the name. Well, I did mess this one up. So let's make sure that I get this correct. And then we're gonna say our key. Now there is a trick here, we can make this persistent, it doesn't really matter for my environment. So I have the net use command, I will need to run that command on any machine that is joined to the domain where my domain um, um, is, my domain controller is, and where my session hosts have been joined. All right, so I didn't talk about the prerequisites, but you know, I have a WD environment, my machines have been domain joined, everything's provisioned, right? That's why I'm able to, to be here. So let's go and connect to one of the session hosts. The way I'm gonna to connect to the session host is I'm gonna use my domain controller as the gym box, because that domain controller has a public IP address after all I'm connected there. And even better, you can see my environment, since it's my test environment, some of those things were already set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect, just so we wanna run our command again. Go open CMD command prompt. 
I'm not sure if you need to do this administrator. I've just suffered way too often doing this. So we run our command and it will make, make sure no errors come out. And happens almost instantaneously. The command completed successfully. So yeah, happened here as well. Okay. Seems fine. We got connected to our file share. Now, I'm gonna use the, the, the lazy way. I'm gonna right click properties, security, I'm gonna click edit, and I'm gonna click add. And the first thing I wanna check here is I wanna make sure that whatever is uh, resolved as the source of the identity is my domain controller and not my storage account. And the way I can confirm that is over here. If this has my storage account, things are not correct. Okay, so we're gonna say object types, we're gonna check computers, because again, we need to grant permissions to the computer object. And I'm, I said again, I'm gonna specify that, but MSX AppAttach requires that the machines not the user, the machines have access to, this, um, to the MSX image. Here we're going to do STG. Uh, way too many. Oh no, to be precise, I mistyped it. Now, there will be way too many. I want these guys. And that is the wrong thing to do. We need to add the group. Okay, so step back. What is our group? We say we have UPDFS logic or something like that. And we say we had WD test users something. Test users. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the group. I'm gonna click OK. And I'll, okay, so WD test user has read and execute permissions. PDF as well, she has uh, also the execute. So this is also checked. Our account, has, sorry, our machine accounts have permissions on the share. Now, with that said, we should be able to go back into the portal and um, provide that same path again. And everything should be working. So let's go see that. Here we're back in the portal. I am going to close this so I get a new error or oh, hopefully no error. I will try again. And you'll be like, no, it's not working again. Well, there is another caveat here when we're doing dealing with Active Directory Domain Services. So our machines have been added to that group. Uh, but there is this um, interesting functionality where you adding a machine that's already running to a group does not necessarily uh, mean that that group will pick up its membership to the group for that to happen we need to restart our machines so i'm gonna go do that i'm not gonna go um, yeah, i can actually show you how to restart your machines if you really need to but hopefully you don't so i'm gonna do the restart and since I have two machines in my host pool and I want them both working, I'll do both machines. Um, so this will take probably a few minutes. Um, and I will resume this video once uh, the machines are back up. So at this point, it's been about two, three minutes. So I am assuming that the machines have been restarted. Uh, back in the Azure portal, same host pool, still no um, MSX packages. What I'm going to do here is again paste the path, click away. Again, the UI is reaching out to the session hosts, to the agent, and it's trying to mind the package, uh, to, to mount the package, mind, mount the package. And you can see here that I yet, I still get an error. But now, this error is not that I don't have permissions to access the path. The error here is that my VMs 
do not contain the signature, the certificate needed to be able to mount this package. And how we troubleshoot that uh, will be a separate video. So uh, to recap, it's been a longer video, but it's a very important one because it deals with access to the file share where our MSX images are. So um, this is not the best slide, to, but it covers the main points of this troubleshooting. I checked that I have NTFS permission to the share, RBAC permissions, both of them to a group. Now, this is the tricky part. That group has to be created in the domain controller on premises and synced to Azure. And we also have to make sure that our computer accounts show up in that group. Very important. Um, usually it takes about half an hour for this to happen if you're just creating the group. Now, the machine accounts uh, are synced. Doesn't mean that my machines have picked up the membership to the group. We need to restart them to do that. Why? I don't know. It's been proven by practice. And the final thing that I don't have in this bullet point and I should, so I'm just going to take a second and I, is that my storage account needs to be added to the domain controller, right? With the PowerShell from the UI. Now, so there's an article on our tech community for WVD that you can use to get um, all the steps in details. So the article and this video go together and you can use them interchangeably. So if you look into set it up and detail the instructions, go to the article. This is the troubleshooting section. And the next slide will be with the links. And these are the two links uh, that cover the first article, which has the in-depth Azure file scripts with all the steps. And the second one, the step-by-step -step is pertaining to how you do it with all the nuances around creating the group, syncing it and some of those limitations around the 30 minutes and also uh, uh, there's a, there are links in that second article that's on the tech community with scripts that can help you force the sync faster. With that, it's been uh, way too long of a video. Uh, hope this is helpful. I know it will be helpful for me because the next time you come to me with a question around how you troubleshoot and how you set it up, I'll just send, it to, send you to this video. Thank you.